What is a vulnerability assessment? It is looking at a system, whether it's a network, a computer, a bunch of computers, an application, a website, a database, email, whatever it is, looking at it and seeing if it has weaknesses. Now, vulnerability assessment is only kind of the beginning of your ethical hacking. With a vulnerability assessment, we're inspecting a system or an application. How well can it withstand an attack? So we're trying to measure and classify the vulnerabilities of computers, networks, and communication channels. We use it to identify weaknesses and to predict the effectiveness of any security measures. Uh, you can have all kinds of vulnerability assessments. Um, you can actively assess your scanning hosts and services and vulnerabilities. You can passively assess, just watch, sniff traffic, not interact. You can assess just a host. You can assess the internal network, the external network, such as um, your, your hosted website, um, applications, um, like your web apps to see if they're misconfigured or if they have any issues. Uh, any part of your network or your wireless network. So we can be testing all kinds of things. Typically, it comes down to network host application. This is the sort of the three major categories of vulnerability scanning. So how do we do it? What's our methodology? Well, we have phase one where we just acquire stuff. We're just collecting information in the background. We're looking at policy and looking at configurations, looking at legal requirements, um, looking to see if there was anything previously discovered, which means, of course, you're going to have to have documentation. I know that when I do a vulnerability assessment, the first thing I ask for is documentation. Let me see what was already discovered. Let me see what your policies are, or even if you don't have any. That, that's, that's assessment right there. Let me see when the last time, let me see your patch update logs, let me see your antivirus logs, let me see the documentation so I know where to go from here. After looking at all that documentation, let me actually identify. Let me have interviews. Let me watch. Um, let me get information about the components you use. Let me look at industry standards. Let me just see um, what you have now and compare it to what other people are doing and what other people recommend. And then let me analyze. And I'm going to review everything um, as well as the results for any, from any previous vulnerable, vulnerability assessment, assuming there are any. And then I'm going to actually do some scanning and identify risks myself. I'm going to do some threat and risk analysis. I'm going to an analyze the effectiveness of existing controls and policies, keeping in mind that a policy actually is one of the control types. It's the overarching control type. I'm going to evaluate. So I'm in phase four. I'm going to determine the chance of exploitation of identified vulnerabilities. I'm going to identify gaps between our current security measures and what's required. I'm going to determine what controls are required to mitigate those identified vulnerabilities. And I'm going to identify what we have to upgrade to get to that point. And all of this, of course, includes me doing some hacking in order so I can answer some questions. Then I'm going to uh, generate reports. And uh, maybe I'll produce a draft, let people take a look at it. But my report should include general findings, specific recommendations, the, the methods we used, all the tasks we undertook, any terms or definitions, all the information that was collected in all phases, and all the documentation I turn out, and, and it's going to have so it's going to have like an executive summary, and then all the things we did in detail, so that uh, you can have the executives look at it and just consume how it impacts them, and then the technical nuts and bolts with conclusions and findings and my little like summarization conclusion thing. And uh, so it, it, in the technical part, it has to include steps that can be reproduced possibly, or at least I have to say how I did it, uh, so that um, my conclusions, I can justify my conclusions. 
Now, when I have this report ready, I need it to be stored in a secure manner. I can't just have it printed and lying around. Be and probably I don't want to email it either. I want to securely hand it off um, because I don't want um, the information in it to fall into the wrong hands. Because then if, if that leaks out, then a, a, a malicious hacker would go, oh, that's how I get in. Thank you for doing all the work for me. And they take advantage of it before any of the controls and the recommendations are put in place. In addition to this, um, I need to stay up on the latest vulnerabilities. I need to do vulnerability research. So this is the process of discovering new vulnerabilities, new design flaws that might be um, used against our OS, or our applications, or our network. Now, vulnerabilities are classified by their severity level, low, medium, or high, and um, whether or not they can be exploited locally or remotely. So we need to do vulnerability research to always see the latest trends, threats, and upcoming attacks. We need to find weaknesses and be alert, uh, not only us as a security administrator, but the system administrator, the network administrator, before, hopefully, an attack might happen. So we need to get information that will help prevent security problems from the beginning, as well as how to recover in case there is an attack. Where can you go to do vulnerability research? Um, EC Council has a Code Red Center. There's Microsoft TechNet. There, there is something called Security Magazine, Security Focus. Um, there's HackerStorm, Help, HelpNet Security, SC Magazine, Windows Security, Computer World, Hacker Jur Journal, um, SANS.org, um, uh, Department of Homeland Security, the FBI. Uh, so, and qu quite honestly, these sites will come and go, some of, some of the smaller sites. Uh, Sophos, um, Trend Micro. So you need to just be reading in general uh, all of these things. And of course, you're going to do pen testing. The pen penetration testing is what the ethical hacker does. You evaluate the security, simulating an attack to see if the vulnerabilities can actually be exploited. See what security measures there are. You anal actively analyze for any weakness or technical flaw. And you document how we exploit the weakness. And you give that report to management and the technical personnel. We do it to identify threats, to reduce cost, to provide assurance, to make and maintain certifiable um, industry regulations. We adopt best practices in compliance. We make sure that we have protections and controls that are working. We choose our best choices for up, upgrading our existing infrastructure. We'll focus on the things that are high, secure, high severity first. We need to prepare the organization to prevent the exploits. And we need to evaluate, um, test and evaluate all the possible devices. So security audit versus vulnerability assessment versus pen testing. Just know that they go hand in hand. They have subtle differences. Security audit, we're checking to see if the organization is following a required policy and procedure. Vulnerable t vulnerability testing, we're trying to discover weaknesses. It does not mean we're going to exploit. Pen testing, we're actually going after those vulnerabilities and trying to exploit them. Uh, there are different teams. The blue team, this is a term that is used, that is applied to people who are the security responders, who are constantly looking for uh, signs of infiltration and getting rid of it. The whole role is to detect and mitigate red team activities and be ready for any surprise attacks. The red team is the ethical hackers. We're doing the pen testing. We do it with little or no access in the beginning. We, we black box it, as it were, where we're, we're like real hackers. We'll do it without warning, or maybe with warning. We'll um, detect the network and system vulnerabilities. And we'll check security from the attacker's perspective. Different types of pen testing. Black box means I don't know anything about your network before I start, just like an outside hacker. White box, I have complete knowledge. Gray box, I know something. Black box best simulates a real outside attack. It is very likely to miss things. White box 
you have intimate knowledge of everything, so you will catch more things, but it is not a realistic simulation. Plus, it also, um, if you have your inside team doing this, um, they won't be thinking creatively or thinking outside the box. And gray box is something in the middle. Like most pen testers will do some kind of gray box. They'll, they'll start with maybe a little bit of information, or they'll be totally black box. Um, there are different groups that put out different testing methodologies. You can check it out. OWASP, these are uh, the Open Web Application Security Project, really nice people. They're mostly there to teach developers how to uh, do secure coding, but um, they also put out testing methodology. There's the OSS TMM, the Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual that you can look at. There's uh, the Information System Security Assurance Fra Assessment Framework. Uh, EC Council has something called the LPT methodology, which is a standard for comprehensive information system security auditing. So these are all methodologies that can be used. And with that, that's about vulnerability assessment.